Good morning. This particular little video is basically to show you how the plasma in a chamber relates to uh, blowing up a tube here. See? Now I want you to watch that little balloon. And when you're watching that balloon, look very carefully at what's going on inside the chamber. What you'll see in there is you'll see the fact that we are creating a plasma. Now, the plasma we're creating in there is it's being done by way of the three arcs into a accumulator and is the actual volume is a, roughly the size of a small pea. So we get this kind of reaction from doing nothing more than that. Also I want you to pay attention to the color okay because the color is important in the process. As you can see, the color is more purple uh, than white. So, that gives you a quick idea what all is going on here. And we can't leave it on too long because it, uh, it has a tendency to draw a little more stuff than what we need. Now, actually, uh, the circuit that, I mean, the, uh, the, the driver for this test, and that's what this is, is a test, is uh, our popper 2 board here. Okay. And the, the popper 2 is basically just a grown-up version of the popper. The popper actually would create a similar effect. It's just that you can see the popper 2 is set up to handle four channels. Now, none of this has been uh, optimized for anything. You'll notice that the coil here is wide open. It's not attached to anything. The radio frequency back here is not attached to anything. In other words, this is just a stock uh, chamber that has a head in the back and it's filled with gas. There's nothing at all here to help this out. Now, a lot of you, a lot of people have said, well, they don't understand what, uh, what the popper did. Well, the popper did the same thing, only it did it in two channels. This one actually has four. We used three in this particular test. And the popper... The original popper would... Oh, I, I also should have mentioned that nothing here has so far been fine-tuned. Remember earlier I said that uh, the electronics have a tendency to get warm after the coils. And the reason for that is because we have not gone back in and set this for the proper dwell and things yet. We just uh, thought we'd do a quick let you see what's going on with it kind of thing. And uh, now that you know what it looks like, well, the, the part two, uh, in part two, we'll add the electronics uh, for the chamber and uh, for the chamber coil. And in part three, we'll add the radio frequency 
and at that point you'll get a chance to see uh, just exactly what can happen here. Because um, as you can tell, it's very definitely quite active. It's just uh, got to do it a certain way. And because we haven't done anything about the dwell, uh, we also only get about 200 kV on our ball. So uh, sometimes you'll see the bloom bounce harder than others, and that's because during that time they they actually went to where they were supposed to go, and uh, one of them didn't go errant like we have here. Okay, so that's about as uh, open as we can be with this thing, I think. Uh, Good luck, and I'll get back to you later on. Thank you. Oh, yes, you'll notice that the uh, the arcs are, are not white. That's very important, and if you think that's not important, then go have a look at all of the plasma information that we have up for videos and what those colors should be, okay? Because uh, all that white you see from the heat builders that make the uh, can and the can thing work and the rest of that okay is gonna is, is showing one of the basic uh, limitations that the actual PAP circuitry has. In other words uh, the PAP circuitry will go terribly bad uh, at some point. We won't get into that now we'll get into it later. Okay? Alright so, off we go. Thank you. I just wanted to, like I say, make sure you understood that this is just first crack out of the box here. We haven't done anything at all to uh, optimize anything. We just threw it on here and told it to go. Thank you.